Hey, this is Christy Mickelson, and today let's talk about the spirit meaning of deer. And I'm just going to talk about deer in general. I, I want to make clear that so there are, are many species of deer, and, and that to go deeper into a deer spirit meaning, if you've had deer come into your life, you'll also want to look at the particular species that is, that is coming to you, if it's a whitetail or a mule deer or a roe deer or you know, whatever else is out there, they each have their own flavor of deer. But today I'm going to just talk about deer in general. There are many species of deer worldwide. Uh, they're found on native species on every continent except for Antarctica and Australia. So, And they, they tend to play a, a pretty predominant role in mythologies and, and spiritual consciousness wherever they're found. They are have historically been a very important food source for humans. And so um, the deer spirit has a, a pretty significant, plays a pretty significant role in human consciousness. As far as uh, characteristics of deer that really um, speak to the spirit. I think some of the ones that, that really jump out, uh, the grace and beauty of deer. It really, the, the, the deer meaning has a lot to do with grace and beauty. Grace in, in more than one way. It's a physical grace, but also the spiritual grace, um, you know, especially as a prey animal and, you know, one that, that uh, if you look at a lot of cultures, they believe that the the deer actually gives itself, uh, gives of itself. So that's that element of, you could say self-sacrifice, but I'd like, I, th I think maybe a better word is selflessness, to, to give of oneself to benefit more than just oneself. The beauty of the deer, of course, is, is they're just gorgeous animals. And depending on the species, they're going to be, you know, sometimes just the brown or red color of the deer. And, and some of them have spots or just beautiful patterns. And, of course, the, the, the huge eyes are just, um, you can just lose yourself and, and very soulful. Gentleness is another characteristic that often is associated with deer. They're not always gentle. The, the males, the stags, can often be actually quite violent. Uh, but, but in general, it, it, it gives the impression of a very, very gentle animal. Um, they're, they're quiet, and uh, if it were a person, it would be soft-spoken. And then another is just the sense of innocence. And we'll get, get into that a little bit more later. Deer also is a, an incredible just jumper just for for the leaps that it makes and if you watch a deer the, just the v very beautiful movements that they have and even when they're in flight it's just pure grace that the way that they move and that has a pretty strong connotation with with the meaning in terms of like if you're a deer person you may be one that can take intuitive leaps just leaps of insight that, that just come to you. So you might find that you have a knowingness that you may suddenly have information or knowledge that's imparted to you. You don't, may not even know from where, but you just know it. You know the truth of it. So that's part of, of deer magic. Um, they're extremely sensitive animals. Um, you know, they're, they're always, if you look at them and observe their behavior, they're always looking, listening, observing. Um, so to observe, to listen, that might be something, if a deer comes into your life, it, it often is a message to stop and watch and observe and increase your awareness. So this is an animal that, uh, animal spirit that can help you do that. You know, keeping your eyes, keeping your ears open, even all the senses, the, the um, sense of touch, um, your sense of smell, uh, deer kind of points to just stop and open up your senses and observe. Be aware. That's one of the very primary meanings of deer. And along with that comes, you know, not just the physical sensitivity, the spiritual sensitivity. Um, the antlers of the male deer just are, are 
representative. They're almost like antennae that, that, you know, deer people tend to be very, very spiritually sensitive, um, spiritually intuitive. Uh, the antlers are almost like this physical representation of, like, like I said, antennae representing that openness to spirit and and bringing in those messages bringing in that awareness into the into consciousness or even unconsciousness we can be unconsciously aware of things and and you know so so one has to be very careful if one is working with deer energy that one it's easy to open oneself to things that are maybe not the best for us okay so we can be open but it's important if you're a dear person to understand that there's a certain vulnerability um, in that and to you may have to put up some protections. Again, deer is a prey animal. So it's if you have strong deer energy, you might be open or susceptible to predators. Um, you know, I don't know how else to say it. But be careful of making yourself too available, okay? So it'll be important for you to learn to put up your boundaries. And, and to do that, you may need to bring in and, and call on some of the energies from perhaps some of the predators of deer. Like wolf energy could be very helpful for you to, to cultivate that as well and to, to call on the wolf or the mountain lion or, or one of these more predator animals as protector spirits okay because deer one another of the meanings of deer is purity okay deer were one of the sacred symbols of the virgin goddess of the hunt artemis and and there again you've got that dynamic of the hunter and the hunted together there there are quite a few goddesses and so forth that that are associated with with deer but in addition to artemis the deer is also associated with the christ and the soul's desire for purification this is also connected again with the antlers of the male deer, where the he grows them every summer, and then after the mating season, he sheds them again in the winter. Okay, that that ties into the symbolism of renewal, rebirth, resurrection. Okay, um, so there are stories about deer appearing to certain saints and so forth, and and helping with their conversion. Um, so definitely there's a connection with Christ. But that also, that symbolism goes deeper into antiquity. And that goes back to like the antlered uh, Celtic god, the, the horned god, the antlered god, uh, Cernunos, the god of fertility, the underworld and wealth and abundance. Cernunos was born on the winter solstice. He dies on the summer solstice. And he's also related to the green man archetype, the symbol for the masculine creative force and virility. So especially if you're getting male deer coming in, the bucks, the stags, very powerful symbol for masculine creative power, okay? And, and the creative force of the earth to just simply spring forth. And also, but very important to remember, in our culture, we have a, a big emphasis on that. Let's go, 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 go. And, and sometimes that masculine force, you know, we have a lot of, there's a lot of that in our culture, right? You know, just let's, let's you know, do our thing. Let's, let's just, you know, make it happen. But Deer reminds us that that doesn't come without, you, you can't keep that up, that it needs to be there there need to be cycles of rest and renewable renewal you know so that y y y trying to keep up that that highly charged masculine let's do it kind of energy like there are some species of deer i believe the elk you know when they have their mating season they are like on they are like mating away for like it's amazing you know the the the, the masculine power there is just like go 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 get it and and let's do it and let's like literally let's do it and and and, and that you know it's 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 very very powerful but then afterwards like he sheds his antler he becomes like a toe for a while and he doesn't mate again for a long time so so you know if you are finding that you are just feeling pressure to produce and produce and perform and perform and perform and not giving yourself that rest you know it, it's 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 going to lead to burnout 
and deer reminds us of that, that it's really, really important to have those and, and sometimes prolonged periods of rest and renewal. Okay, deer reminds us that there is a time for everything and everything in its time. And when we are lying ourselves and, and allow ourselves to rest and renew, then it, it gives us renewed vigor, um, you know, when the time does come to do that performance. I, I'm going to stick with the male deer for a while. And, and deer is one of the few mammals that has, well, I guess a lot of mammals have a big difference between male and female. You can you can see it in them, but, but deer especially so. So there's there's a dualism here between masculine and feminine. And so if if deer is a, a power animal for you, um, this might be something that comes up for you is balancing your masculine and feminine and honoring both. So again, going back to the growing and the shedding of antlers, there may be times where you need to really draw on your feminine side and times where you know it's important to be aware and honor the masculine side we have a society that you know we're well known for maybe not honoring the feminine but i think sometimes we don't honor the masculine as well and 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 it's like you know there's a fear there of of stepping into your your masculinity and this is for both men and women but i think particularly for for men who have deer as a power animal it's important to to really honor the the masculine energy within you because deer is so soft and gentle and we can be soft and gentle and and still be very very strongly masculine and and tap into that you know that strength and the virility that that comes with the masculine energy so don't be afraid of your masculinity i think sometimes men who who have strong deer energy you know, feel that power, and, and sometimes it's it's it, it can be a little bit daunting. So, honor that, honor that part of you, and recognize that it it dear also is a reminder that, you know, the stepping in and being a strong male does not mean that you can't be gentle as well and sensitive. I'm going to move on and talk about the relationship of the deer with its environment, and and that's another thing that the antlers really point to is that the antlers really do resemble the branches of the trees of the forest. Now, the deer is, is definitely a forest spirit, so that it, it really has the sense of oneness to it. The way any deer, whether it's a doe or a buck, will just kind of blend into the forest. They'll sort of blend in and out. You, you may have had this experience where you may be, I, I used to live where there were a lot of valleys. It was in southwest Wisconsin and, and very hilly country and you could be walking in like November and, and the winter time you can look across and see the whole hillside in front of you and you could be looking at the forest and, and since you don't see the, the leaves are down right you can see kind of right through it and all of a sudden you realize that there's a herd of deer that's been watching you <laughs> that you didn't even see because they're standing so still and they just blend so beautifully with their environment. So that's that's another aspect of deer that is this oneness and it's reflected with the the antlers just so resembling the branches of the trees in which they live. The fawn also when it you know, with its spots, I'm thinking white-tailed deer here because that's what I'm more familiar with. You know, but with the fawn, with its spots, it just echoes the dappled light of the forest, and it blends right in. Um, so this feeling of oneness, and again, that's that that real spiritual connection. In terms of relating to the chakras, I always feel like deer is a real heart animal. I feel a real connection with the heart chakra with deer, as well as crown. Okay, heart and crown. A crown, of course, again, being that antler <laughs> sense of drawing down that spiritual energy right into the crown, but but also heart. There's a lot of love energy around deer in kind of a symbol of love. And along with that, this, the sense of nurturing. And, and a very important lesson from the doe, from the mother deer. Um, when she has her fawn, She's a very, very good mother, and she has really rich, really rich milk. So she'll feed her fawn, but then the fawn lies down, and she will actually leave it. 
she'll leave it and go nurture herself. She'll go and find, you know, the food that she needs. She'll go drink from the stream and, and she'll leave the fawn there for, for hours sometimes and, you know, get herself what she needs and then she'll come back. And again, she's an excellent mother. But I think a lot of, especially human mothers, but any of us who are nurturing types and giving types, we tend to get into this pattern of giving and giving and giving until we just deplete ourselves. And dear really teaches us to, you know, that we can't give from a place of depletion, that it's really important to fill our own cups as well, and not to feel guilty about that, okay? So that we need to nurture ourselves, we need to fill our cups so that we can give the richest of what we have to others. Another thing about the feminine aspect of Dear the Doe, I, I'm going to recommend if you uh, have you know, feel resonant with dear energy. There is a documentary film called Touching the Wild by uh, Joe Huto, who's a m- mule deer researcher, a just incredible and actually heartbreaking documentary about mule deer. And he actually went into the wild and befriended this herd of mule deer. And almost he became accepted as one of them. And he was able to really get an insider perspective on the deer behavior and the, the you know the deer relationship um, with each other and with with their environment, and one of the things that he realized was we think of the male deer as being the leader of the herd, but what he found was even though the male deer had a lot of dominance within the herd, it was actually one of the it was an older female that actually was the leader of the herd, and it was only when she accepted him that the rest of the herd accepted him and she actually was this matriarch um, of the, the you know the deer even though she didn't appear from an outsider's eyes to really have any status she was actually the one that the other deer looked to for guidance so looking at this whole masculine feminine relationship opening oneself to the deep feminine to the feminine nature to to the elder wisdom and and leadership from a place of quiet confidence and humility is a big part of of deer energy um let's talk a little bit about the shadow side of deer because every every animal archetype you know they're they're not good or bad they simply are okay so we and look, look at them without judgment. When I say shadow side, every every part of that animal, all of its behaviors and its characteristics have developed in order to help it survive, you know, to help the individuals survive as well as helping the species survive. So there's not good or bad. So when I say shadow side, it's just that sometimes there will be aspects of an archetype that either we as in our judging nature as humans look at and think of as maybe not as good, or parts of the deer that, you know, or the the archetype that we're looking at that sometimes show up in ways that don't serve either the animal or ourselves in certain situations. Okay, so by looking at shadow side of deer, um, we're going to look at some of the same elements, um, some of the same features and behaviors that, that do serve it, but that in certain circumstances can be not as beneficial. Okay, and one of these, and we're talking about deer as as heart chakra and a symbol of love, the shadow side of that is jealousy, in that uh, male deer can be very, very, very jealous, and that's that's part of the whole dynamic, and, and it serves them because it, with the male deer, he wants to bring together a harem of females, and, and during the mating season, he's very protective of them, very jealous of them, um, because you know, of course, he wants his genes to survive. So he has to fight. He's got to, you know, jealously guard his his herd. And that helps him to, you know, if, if he's successful in that, those are those successful genes that get passed on to the next generation. There are times where we need to guard what is ours, okay? So sometimes that jealousy can be very, very helpful to us. Okay? And 
when especially highly spiritual people sometimes we get so into the oneness and what so into the giving of ourselves that that we lose sight of you know there are things that we need to protect and hold as ours um we, you know we're here on the earth to also express ourselves as autonomous beings so the jealousy can actually be good but sometimes it tips into the not so helpful realm okay and that's where it becomes the shadow um, so especially in terms of love and um, love attachments can can be extremely challenging so if if dear is coming to you and especially if you're in a love relationship that's kind of rocky or you know any kind of human relationship where you love somebody else and things are you know if there's discomfort there look and see if maybe you're not holding on you know more than than really what is appropriate okay watch that jealousy another uh, shadow aspect of deer again the leaps the leaps of insight can be very very beneficial but they can also be associated with like the unsettled mind you know leaping from here to there and and just not focused in in hindu mythology we've got uh, the lord shiva and he's got several arms and, and one of them he holds a deer and it's symbolic of his mastery over that uh, what we in the west often call the monkey mind in, in this case it's coming up as a deer mind of just kind of like leaping from here to there without the focus so he's holding this deer is like holding it still and being able to master that so be aware of um, that tendency sometimes if you are working with deer energy to be unfocused or just kind of jumping from one thing to another without really you know so some grounding might be a, a good thing for you to to work on and then the fear response to deer again their prey animal and sometimes sometimes that can manifest as being prey to one's own fear and in a deer that's going to come up in two ways one is in the flight and again that that can connect sometimes with the, the monkey mind idea or with simply running away from your purpose running away from things that would really benefit you okay because it's like you know when we start following our purpose the fears crop up and and one response is simply to turn your back and run right go back to comfort zone and another response is paralysis okay like deer in headlights so how this shows up is the shadow you may find yourself clinging on to unhealthy situations that would be the paralysis you know holding on to that job that you're miserable in um you know holding on to that relationship that is not serving you that's paralysis okay so deer can come in and, and kind of show us that that's happening or habitually running away from opportunity if this becomes a pattern then your challenge the lesson you need to learn is to face your fears with authority stand up for your needs instead of putting up or you know putting up with stuff or running away so for help with this again we're going to look to the deer's predators um you know like the wolf is a really good one to help you develop your courage and integrity so uh, I could go on and on about deer. There's probably a lot of other things that we could talk about, um, but I think that's probably enough for now. I hope you've enjoyed this. And um, if you'd like more on animal guide meanings and so forth, you can visit my blog at brightspiritrising.com. 